right, this is DIY Homestead Part 2. And uh, Elijah and I built this ground mount and we're continuing on. And I know Abraham got involved with uh, him and Elijah stringing it. So let's talk about stringing. Once the panels are up, everything's good. Then you have to string them according to the inverters that you're using, charge controllers that you're using. Make sure you don't violate the uh, open circuit voltages and you know, consult your manual for your inverter. But this is a Solark 12K stringing. So these are 40, 400 watt panels. And there are, um, there's something you gotta pay attention to and that's the panel stringing voltage, the open circuit voltage, not wanting to violate the, the specs, which is 500 volts on a Solark. And there you have a panel sizing tool and that takes into account the coldest day of the year because the voltage on a string of panels can go from 80 to 100 volts higher than what is on these panels. So these are 48.55 um, volts open circuit. Multiply that times nine and you're, you're up there into 400 volt range. And then with the coldest day of the year, depending on where you are, I'm in South Carolina versus Canada, you're gonna possibly violate that MPPT input voltage of 500 volts. So you gotta be careful there. Here in our case, this is a 34 panel array. So I'm gonna back up a little bit and talk about it. We uh, also don't wanna violate the overall MPPT wattage. So what we have is a 34 panel array. Now we are feeding two Solarks, so I have room to spare. But if this was feeding one, I have to pay, pay close attention. So I have nine panels and nine panels. They're in series, positive, negative, positive to negative. And then those two are paralleled together to raise the amperage up. And then those four wires will go into one MPPT channel. On this side, I have eight and eight. It's just how the ground mount worked out for the seasonal adjust. It's 34 panel ground mount. We like 28s, 32s, uh, where the strings are all the same, but with two Solarks, it didn't much matter. And I had this material. So you can see there's a lot of different ways to wire uh, the panels and do wire management. Because I have cows here, I asked the gents to keep the wires high so they can't really reach any of the wires and uh, nibble on them too bad. So uh, that's a different story. If you don't have critters underneath, it's not an issue. Just try to make it nice and neat and consistent on how they're wired. Again, this is an EMP hardened system. So I have suppressors here to protect the J boxes on the panels. And uh, they're on every J box, okay? So panels of nine in series and then I'm paralleling. How do I do the parallel? Well, on one side, and I did just for instructional purposes, I used red wire for positive and black wire for negative. You don't have to do that. This is the branch connector that we use from Staubly. And we're paralleling here um, the positives. And uh, down here on the other side, we're paralleling the negatives off of those nine. And then we just run our home runs back to the disconnect, which I'll talk about. On this side, we did the same thing. We have a positive and negative branch connector, which takes two inputs to one output. So that's paralleling them. When you parallel, you raise the amperage. When you series, you raise the voltage. Okay, so these are wired and landed. I think we had 400 volts on the nine panel array, which is really 18 panels at 400 volts. And then we have 350 volts roughly on the, uh, eight panel arrays. Cows have already been licking here, so, but this stuff's pretty bulletproof. Weatherhead, they can't really reach that. So what we're beginning to do, now that we've landed our solar here, we need to take that to the house. And what we do in these IMOs is we transition. We have PV landed on the top, PV wire landed on the top, and then we'll come off of the bottom with THHN. There's no wire now. So what we're doing is running a two inch pipe in honor of two inch Johnny to the house and two inch just makes it easy. It's expensive, but uh, yeah, this was $7 a stick. It's now $22 at Home Depot, fun times. So we're gonna continue on a uh, nice deep trench. Most places want 18 inches to the top of the conduit. So this is gonna be Elijah's task for the day. And uh, 
if he gets a hold of himself. I don't know what he's doing over there. But um, so he's going to take the Yamar, and we've already painted. You probably can't see the paint line, but I painted him out of line. And uh, we're going to go to our future power shed. A lot of folks are doing power sheds, pulling a, a building onto the property, maybe a pre-made, maybe you stick build it, maybe you put it in an existing shop. But this is a good option because a lot of homes were not designed or thinking about going off grid or hybrid and they don't have the room to put the inverters and batteries and such so it's nice to have a its own mechanical room that's climate controlled we'll put a little mini split on there some sort of air conditioner p-tac who knows something like that so i'm elijah is going to be in this open pasture and it'll give him good practice to be able to run the excavator. So you ready for that? Yeah. You're gonna earbud it up. So this is actually like going from an Xbox, his Xbox, <laughs> but a useful, this is a useful use of joysticks where we're actually bringing power down. And I will have him do the voltage drop calculations too as he learns the math to make sure that our wire that we put in this trench, we're shooting for a certain size. I might not tell him it's his problem to solve. Mm -hmm. And I want less than 3% voltage drop from this array to my inverters. And so we'll do a little calculation there to make sure we're good. There's some rules of thumb that we use, but it's nice to be able to do the calculation as well. Okay, so we are, we are built, wired, paralleled, landed, check voltage, polarity. Everything is good to this point of these 600 volt rated DC IMO disconnects. They're awesome. We use tons of them. And then the pull box just makes a great way to pull the wire. We'll pull, you wanna pull from the, you let gravity help you. We'll set up our wire pull up here and pull down to the building. Yes, we're gonna put another piece of Unistrut here and a strut clamp similar to this one to make it cow proof because they'll be pushing and pushing on it and having fun. So Elijah, you better get digging. This is uh, your power system. Make sure that, make sure you follow the paint line if you can. No, uh, no S curves, the smoother the, the pipe, uh, the easier the pull. So, okay, that's enough on DIY part two. We'll show you the trench, I guess, when it's done. Okay, so this is a great place out in the middle of nowhere for Elijah to practice. He hasn't been running the machine that much, so when I'm on a job and I'm next to people's vehicles and houses, I can't let him do that. He's only 14. Um, it makes me very nervous anyway so i put him out here he's seat belted up he's got his ear boogers in and uh <laughs> he's learning how to dig a trench and um we'll uh we'll see how he does all right this is good training he's got a 400 foot trench to build so it should be good